All right, let's work one more example. So this example says, Purple Haze machi Machine Shop is considering a four-year project to improve its production efficiency. Buying a new machine press for $470,000 is estimated to result in $190,000 in annual pre-tax cost savings. The press is going to fall in the five-year maker's class, and it's going to have a salvage value at the end of the project's life of $80,000. The press also requires an initial investment in spare parts inventory of $20,000, along with an additional $2,500 in inventory for each succeeding year of the project. If the shop's tax rate is 35% and its discount rate is 9%, should the company buy and install the machine press? Now this is a slightly different prob problem than what we've seen so far. This is something called a replacement problem. And it's a very common problem faced in business, which is when is it practical and profitable to replace old aging equipment with new, more efficient equipment? And so that's what this question is trying to ask. Should we replace an existing piece of machinery with a new, more efficient, better running piece of machinery that is gonna result in cost savings? And so this is one of the big differences here between the other problems that we've looked at. And the big difference is that this machine does not generate any additional income. It does exactly the same thing as the piece it replaces. However, what it does do is cut costs for the project. And effectively, that's the same thing as generating more revenue. We just have to think about it slightly differently. So we can still draw up a, a sort of pseudo income statement and let's see what that looks like. So we'll write out our little timeline here. Again, we have a four year project with year zero being the, the initial investment year. And if we had our standard income statement, we'd have revenue minus cost minus depreciation gives me EBIT. But we don't have our standard income statement here because this machine isn't generating any new revenue. Instead, what it's doing is saving on costs. So that's what we'll put as the top line here. Cost savings or cost reduction. It's gonna bring us 190,000 in cost savings. In every year of its four year life. Now again, because I am reducing costs, this has the same impact as increasing revenue, all else the same. So we can treat this as additional revenue for the firm. Next is depreciation. And we are going to depreciate this asset on the five year maker's schedule. And what we depreciate is the fixed asset. And here, that's the entirety of the problem. We're spending $470,000 on this fixed asset. The five-year maker schedule, again, it's not something you'd have to memorize. It's just something you would look up. Has depreciation of 20% in the first year, 32% in the second year, 19.2% in the third year, and 11.52% in the fourth year. Again, note that this is a five-year depreciation schedule and we only have a four-year project life. So there is going to be a final book value here because we will not depreciate this all the way to zero like we would if we held this asset for the full schedule. Now we calculate maker's depreciation by multiplying the cost of the asset 470,000 times the depreciation percentage in each year. So in the first year, that's 470,000 times 20%. In the second year, that's 470,000 times 32% and so on and so forth in years three and four. So that gives me dollar depreciation of $94,000 in year one of 150,400 in year two, 
of 90,240 in year 3 and of 54,144 in year 4. Now, revenue minus cost minus depreciation gives me EBIT. And EBIT here is 96,000 in year one, 39,600 in year two, 99,760 in year three, and 135,856 in year four. Now we can calculate the taxes on EBIT, and the firm pays taxes at 35%. And so our taxes are going to be 33,600 in year one, 13,860 in year two, 34,916, and then 47,549 in the final year of the project. Now uh, EBIT minus taxes gives us net income. But we don't actually need to solve for net income because what we want out of this income statement is operating cash flow. And remember that operating cash flow is EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes and so we can solve for operating cash flow in every year and in year zero there is no operating cash flow we're not operating this machine yet in year one EBIT plus depreciation minus taxes is 96,000 plus 94,000 minus 33,600 that gives us 156,400 in year two 176,140 in year three 155,084 and in year four operating cash flow is 142,450 So that's step one. Remember, we're trying to solve for the operating, I mean, the cash flows from assets here. And cash flow from assets is operating cash flow minus the change in networking capital minus net capital spending. So we did the first part, which is solve for operating cash flow. The next part is solve for the change in networking capital. And to see the change in something, we need to see the total of something. So we've got total networking capital here and then the change in networking capital beneath it. We go back up to the problem and it says, the press also requires an initial investment in spare parts inventory of $20,000. So whenever we see initial, again, we're always thinking this is our initial investment, our initial cost, and that's what's happening in year zero. And remember that networking capital here, this is a spending account. So we're gonna list positive spending. We've gotta make a $20,000 investment in spare parts. And then it says we're gonna add an additional $2,500 in inventory for each succeeding year of the project. So 2,500 in year one, we add another 2,500 to get 25,000 in year two. Then 27,500 and finally, $30,000 worth of inventory required in year four. So remember that this investment is a, a revolving account. We spend this $20,000 on the first year's worth of inventory, but then we use it and we need to spend it again in each successive year. We need to keep building that inventory up as we use it. And we're gonna make additional purchases of inventory above and beyond that initial $20,000 investment. And that's what we need to be uh, aware of. 
Now the change in networking capital is the difference between one year's networking capital and the next. And in the first initial period, year zero, we don't have any networking capital before that. So the change is this year's $20,000 minus last year's, which is zero. So our change is 20,000. In year one, the change is this year, 22,500 minus last year, which is 20,000. And that's $2,500. And you can see that it's going to continue to be 2,500. And we could have recognized that because we saw that we're adding $2,500 in inventory investment every year. So in this problem we have a change in networking capital in every year because we have additional networking capital investment in every year. Now the final change is that we get our networking capital investment back at the end of the project's life. And so we get the sum of all the investments, all the changes in networking capital back at the end of the project's life. And because this is negative spending, this is a return of our investment, we're going to treat this as a negative here. Now the last part of cash flow from assets is called net capital spending. And net capital spending is our spending on fixed assets and we're only going to buy one fixed asset in this